so um, those of you, and it's most of you, um, that have been with us the last, how long has it been now? Like weeks, how many, like four weeks? I think weeks, this is our weeks? fourth week, yeah. Um, we've been doing the Stop the Insanity series, which um, Janet is showing you how to take one pattern that you have already made to fit you or happen to fit you. Um, so you can use a pattern that you have already made your changes to that fit you or your sloper or whatever and how to make changes to that so that you don't have to buy a brand new pattern just to have something like the sleeves, um, short sleeves versus long sleeves, a different or color. Pockets or a pocket. different length. Well, and the thing that we're doing here, because I have had some requests for uh, more extensive changes, uh, which does require uh, more pattern drafting. And this series is really about the basic. A lot of you are just love to sew. It's your hobby. You like to make all kinds of things for yourself and your family. But you're not interested in becoming a pattern maker or a pattern drafter. Or it's just not your thing. And it's just... You, you can't wrap your brain around it, and that's okay. So what we're doing in this series is simple changes just anybody who knows how to sew a little bit can make. Not complicated, not drafting, but just real simple changes. And then for those who want to go beyond that, we've got lots of support materials and uh, classes and videos and things. So if you want to go beyond that, we're here for you for that but for this series we're just doing changes that can be made very easily yeah so some examples thus far is she did take a long sleeve and um, make it a short sleeve we talked about different pockets different Collar. collars um the last week we did the kimono sleeve right right and um, so it's not a setting sleeve and we did sleeveless Yes. Sleeveless, and we showed how to uh, showed our little uh, quarter inch binding that goes around. Yes, the that arm was a side. very important one because you can't just not put the sleeve on. Correct. So, if any of those you haven't seen any of those um, videos from the last few weeks, they're right here on our Facebook page, or you can find them on our YouTube channel, Islander Sewing Systems. Yeah, Brenda's created a whole yeah. playlist on the uh, Stop the Insanity oh, okay, Camp good. shirt. Mm -hmm. Good. So we had a couple more questions about changes. And I like this first one because, especially because it seems like, how would you do that? And Janet has a very simple answer for you. But it's but without knowing, it could be a very complicated thing. So Marie asked, how do you make a collar that ties into a bow? So you see this a lot on blouses. Um, to give it that fun detail. Mm -hmm. So how would you do that? How would you change your collar um, on a traditional shirt to make it so that it ties in a bow? Okay. All right. So um, back in the 60s, we had quite a few options for that type of blouse. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was popular. And that bow or that tie can be the same width as your collar stand or... It can be much wider if you're looking for something, you know, more flamboyant in the bow. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your collar stand. I've got it folded in half just because it's easier. And you never interrupt this seam down here because this is the one that matches the neckline, right? And this here you never mess with because this is the exact right length. However... You can narrow this down if you need to, but you don't, uh, you just want to come across very smoothly with this. It doesn't need to rise up here at the end, okay? It can come straight across, and then you just continue it the length that you need for your bow, okay? And you put it on exactly the same way, um, but if you wanted the wider, then you would draft a piece that started here and was exactly what you wanted here. And then you could make it wider at the end past the collar stand or past the 
uh, placket. So that's when it starts getting wider, so you could tie it into a much bigger bow. But that's all there is to it. So you have the piece. And do it in muslin, even if you only do the collar stand tie in a muslin. But it's all one piece. Or you can attach it, if need be, depending on your fabric uh, that you have available for it. And, yeah, try it. Try a muslin so you can see how big do I want that? How thick yeah, do I how want? How big of a bow do, want, do I want? Yeah, and how long do you want it? Like, uh -huh. once you make the bow, do you want long, mm -hmm. um, the ties to hang yep. long? Mm -hmm. Do your ears hang low? Yeah. <laughs> or do you want it to be mm -hmm. short? Do you want it to be more like a bow tie-ish type right. looking bow? And consider the ends of your tie, too, for this. You can do it square, or you can do it at a 45 degree angle and if it's a big bow and it's floppy right here having those pointed it just gives it a little more pizzazz so consider that as well but definitely have fun play with that and do it in muslin first all right so that's that fine. was marie right that was marie we have two from marie yeah thank you marie they were both good questions as i recall <laughs> what was the second one <laughs> the second one is how do you ch turn the everybody shirt into a shirt dress? So if you're not familiar, everybody's shirt is a women's blouse. Over there, there'll be one under everybody's shirt in that file. So this is the sh one of the shirt patterns we've been using to base our um, camp shirts on. Okay, But what you can see right here in the view on... This side. The black one. Yeah. <laughs> that one is already a tunic length. So if you wanted to make it even longer, of course you can use the short and lengthen lines to get it to the length you want. But the other thing you've got to consider is walking ease. So one thing is don't put the buttons all the way to the bottom. Leave a little room there and then possibly leave either a shirt tail hem so that it comes up on the side again to give you some walking ease or you could leave a slit like a mm -hmm. six or eight inch slit in the bottom but again and i don't even know that you need to make a muslin for that because what i would do is i would sew it up and i'd leave a slit and then i try it on mm -hmm. and see how if it's too deep or too short or, and just, yeah, yeah just adjust it at that point while uh while you're doing your final fitting so pretty yeah. easy use those short and lengthen mm -hmm. lines um just keep in mind you're gonna want to walk in it correct <laughs> correct not like the models on the red carpet walk like actually walk but some of the things they put them in you can barely yeah. move yeah so yeah no we don't want that <laughs> Yeah, so great questions. Easy, easy changes to make something very different. Right, right. No one would imagine. You could have a whole wardrobe of dresses, shirts, and blouses. And all from the same pattern. All from the same pattern, and no one would ever imagine that just by making those detail changes. Mm -hmm. Collars, cuffs, pockets, length. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Okay, and then Bev had a question. She asked how to narrow shoulders. That's what it says. How do you narrow the shoulders? Okay. So, Bev, um, we have the Woven uh, Bodice Fitting Series, and it's in the playlist on our YouTube channel. But you're going to do that by making a muslin. And I got a muslin back here. That's what I'm going to go around and pull it out here. All right, so when you make the muslin, Bev, you're going to chalk or mark. I use a Sharpie on all my muslins because it's so obvious to see. But there's my seam allowance, okay? So this obviously isn't the right size for me. Uh, but what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you find the point on the shoulders right where you want the seam. This is, let's say this is where you want the seam. You're going to mark that, and you're going to get a nice fit all the way around the shoulder and blend it back into the arm side, front and back. But basically, you're telling me you have narrow shoulders. So it's more like from here to here that you need to sculpt some of that out and then blend it back in. 
then you add your seam allowance back in. Okay, so remember that your shoulder point is here and that's where you want the seam. So you have to be 3 8 or 5 8 beyond that in order for your seam to end up there. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. If you have any other questions, just let me know. But that's all there is to making the shoulders a little bit narrower is to just make sure that you've added your seam allowance and you've marked your shoulder point exactly. Uh, Brenda has a good question. Okay. She wants to know, um, going back to taking the everybody's shirt and making it into longer so that it's a dress. Okay. Is there a maximum you can add to the bottom before it looks wonky? Because she said she's tall. No, because you're not adding it to the bottom. You're going to use those short and lengthen lines. You could go all the way to the floor. You could turn it into a train if you want. Ooh. But I'm sure that's not likely. Anyway, yeah, no, it's not it's not gonna be wonky. Um, because in the you're gonna use the tunic version and then you're going to and remember don't shorten your darts. So if you're short and lengthen line, I'm not sure where it ends up on there, but keep your darts the same if you're going to lengthen it, keep them in the same place and the same length. So you should be good. Yeah, I don't think it'll get wonky on you. There's no reason for it to. However, muslin. <laughs> All right, so that's those questions. If anybody else has any questions, I know there's a little bit of a delay. So if anybody else has any questions about what we have talked about thus far, even in the entire series, um, put it in the comments. Um, but Janet wanted to show you that she's been shopping, <laughs> but this time it's not fabric. We have some new products, some very exciting new oh, products. Okay. Yes. What did you not know where I was going? Yeah. I thought you were going there. Okay. So, um, we have acquired some Dritz curve products. And I really like, you know, when I first learned to use these kind, these are drafting tools, but they also work for alterations. When you're trying to just smooth the curve back out, sometimes when you move something, then the curve's not contiguous anymore. So these are really nice tools to have, and they're not expensive. But what the ones that ever I used were not transparent. And once they came out with the transparent ones, I really like it because I can really see what I'm doing. Because once you put a, a solid metal one over your project and you're trying to, you don't know what you're missing. So I love that about these. And that is a 12 inch and it works for necklines, arm size, or sleeve caps. It even shows you right on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you can even use it for the uh, crotch curve. Okay, and then we got also the Dritz 24 inch hip curve. So this is great for skirts and uh also pants, pants. <laughs> i'm like i know she knows the word pants. anything that goes over your hip <laughs> yeah i know my, my mind wandered sorry well i was just wondering why they thought they could use it for the sleeve i don't think i'd you you don't need it there just a, but it's a cute picture anyway that's what drew my mind away but anyways that's it we've got so both of those i know those. it's hard to say see on here it's like yeah see how long it is it's 24 inches and it's the same material that your quilters rulers are made out of so it's nice and durable and uh, easy to draw around because it's got a nice thick lip and you can buy them separately or in a combo and they are included in this week's sale so um if that's something you're looking for or you think you have a need for we've got them now Okay, put it down, Jessica. And then you hear me talk about this all the time. My favorite, favorite tool. Well, probably not my favorite, favorite, but one of my most favorite. And it's a point turner and a button gauge. So we finally were able to find a wholesale supplier so we could bring them to you. But here's what it looks like up close. How am I doing? Am I in focus? Uh, you're doing good. All right. 
So this is the, obviously the point is where you encourage to turn, uh, you know, ties, waistbands, collars, collar stands out. With. Anything that comes to a point. Right. Now we've got two uh, places for button gauge. So this one is purposely made a little thinner. And when you slide the button on this and then you sew the button on, that amount of thickness in the plastic allows you to get a nice smooth, you can pull your stitches nice and smooth, but it allows you to have a shank so your button will actually button to your garment. Because anybody who's ever sewn a button on really nice and tight found out that it didn't work out so well when they tried to button their garment. So you need that shank. And then at the other end, it's much thicker. So you have a thicker shank. And you need a thicker shank when your fabric's thicker. So if you had a wool coat that's got a facing and everything, that's nice and thick. And you've got to get a button through there. And you've got all that thickness, depth. You need a thicker um, gauge. So you've got two gauges and uh, your point turner all in one tool. <laughs> and those are on the website under Notions. All right. So yeah, this is just like the perfect once you use one of these. I mean, we all have our tools, right? Even if they're not technical, yeah. you know. Your, oh, I used to use your a chopstick. Chopstick, a pen, you know, <laughs> the end of a pencil, like whatever. But once you use this. That's what you need to have, and that's why Janet has five how or many, six. How many can I see from here? Five or six, and it's because I lose them in the mess, and I don't want to look for them. And so. it's the right price point that you can have five or six yeah. and not <laughs> break the bank. Those and the little six-inch rulers, I have them everywhere because, yes. lo and behold, I'll go to look and I can't find one. So, yeah, that's just me because I'm not always as organized as I pretend yes. to be. So since we showed you those um, products and Janet mentioned the sale, if you have not seen the um, newsletter yet today, she is um, running a huge sale. Um, I don't think we've ever done this before. No, maybe? we've talked about it yeah. and we finally figured out how to do it. So Oh, <laughs> that, maybe that's what was holding us back. <laughs> um, it is the entire website. The entire website it's an automatic discount. You don't need a code or anything. If you spend $50, you get 10% off. If you spend $100, you get 15% off. If you spend $200, you get 20% off. So it is a automatic discount mm -hmm. on anything, anything on the site. It does not, and tip, typically we have like restrictions on islander products versus whatever but it's right. whatever go shop to your go shop website. and this even includes kits and you all know the kits are 20 percent off to begin with so stock up on those kits uh get ready and do some islander shirts for um resort wear for the summer or camp shirt kits camp shirts. or t-shirts we've got or if you haven't done your fitting yet we've got the woven bodice fitting kits and we have the knit fit fitting kits fit, fit, fit. They fit and both of those have playlist videos on youtube so that you can follow along but anyway yeah stock up if you have any questions about products or patterns um just send us an email brenda and i'll help you with your purchase all right i don't yet see any more questions about what we've talked about thus far um but i know that there have been um we talked quite a bit about the making the long sleeve the short sleeve and, or the no sleeve mm -hmm. and why you can't just not put the sleeve on and why you can't just chop the long sleeve, the long sleeve to make it a short sleeve. And Janet has come up with some um, things yeah. to show you. Okay, so if you draft, if you had a sleeve that was a long sleeve and you just cut it straight off, First of all, it's probably going to be too narrow, but the other thing it's going to do is it's going to tip up. So I want you to take a look at the sleeves on this shirt and notice how it tips up. That's because that sleeve was not drafted properly. And the reason is, is because the sleeve cap to here isn't long enough. You see that? If this was longer, then you'd have a, a sleeve that 
came across straighter. It's almost like it's not right to be a short sleeve, but it's too long to be a cap sleeve. Yeah. Because it like sticks out like that. Right, right. And I saw a lot of them. And this is like from, you know, a ABC department store. I'm not going to say who it is, but it's inexpensive juniors. But one of the issues in today's ready to wear is that we have several generations who've never even attempted to sew anything. So they don't even know what they're missing. So they wouldn't look at this and say, oh, wow, look at that sleeve isn't drafted properly. They would think, well, that must be the style. Well, yeah, and I was going to say, they might not even care. Yeah, they might not they care. They might not even care. But my guess is it's not super comfortable either because you, and you might not be able to see this on camera, but you could see it pulling. You could see it pulling on that one sleeve. Yeah, and on that skinny little 12-year-old, she probably doesn't care. But the rest of us, we're going to care. And I don't want my sleeves tipping up like that. And I don't want that discomfort. So that was one of the reasons we didn't draft a short sleeve. Because it isn't as quick and easy as taking one that's already been drafted and just superimposing it over the previous sleeve. And so that's why we did what we did. Because there's a distance from here to here. And it depends on the size. So each size, this distance gets a little bit longer and a little bit longer. And you start to get into more complicated theories and drafting that I know that a lot of you don't want to do. You just want a pattern that will work for you so you can sew pretty close. So that's what we're uh, all about. But this was just one that's done right. So this was ready to wear. It wasn't expensive either, but this one is done correctly. So sometimes when you're even shopping ready to wear, you'll be able to notice those differences. All right. All right. All right. Anything else before I go over to the other side of the table? Um, not right now, okay. but I'll have the comments here if anybody has any questions. Um, Janet is going to review that kimono sleeve that she was showing you last week. Yeah, um, I've started the shirt, but I couldn't get it finished for you, so I'll have it for you next week. But the style is, oh, let me move this up. Yeah, the sleeve is part of the shirt. It's not set in. So you can kind of see, this is as long as the sleeve will be, but it's going to have a little cuff right here. And then I'll put the basic collar on it. And this is out of that Cupro, that new fabric we got. Oh, I love it. It is so soft and suede, and it just has this incredible drape. Now, um, and I thought it did pretty well for sewing. I only used one pin, and that was just because the pocket was going all crazy. So I put one pin up here in the corner when I put my pocket on. So it's not difficult to work with. And I did not extend my yoke. I had told you last week I was going to extend my yoke. And I decided I didn't want to go to the trouble. So I put the same yoke in that I usually uh, put in all the other camp shirts. So now I just want to go over quickly the pattern and if anybody has any questions. Um, Brenda did before we, in case I don't So I don't lose it. Brenda did ask a question about the collar. Um, when you're changing that, can you just leave the collar off or do you have to change something? So if you just want a basic collar stand collar, you just leave the collar off. That's exactly right. Was that Brenda? Yes. Yeah, that's correct, Brenda. However, you may want to make some changes to that collar stand. And again, that's what I did. Um, with this new pat, with the changes in this pattern. So um, I had the collar stand here. Oh, it's over there, Jess. So it's right underneath the ruler. Okay, so this was the original collar stand, the one that I have on the shirt, the version that I'm wearing. And so this is the regular collar stand. But it's too high for me, I felt. It was way too high. And I don't have much of a neck. So I wanted it shorter. So 
I made this one shorter. But again, we're not going to mess with the length and we're not going to mess with the lower seam allowance because that goes on the neckline. But we can make it as short as we want within reason. I'd say this is about as short as you can make it because, yeah, it's an inch and a half. I wouldn't go any narrower than an inch and a half because you've got to get that thing turned up under there. You know how we do when we put it when the final stitching of the collar stand and it gets a little tight in there if you get it any narrower than this. When you make a, a collar or you're going to change a collar or a collar stand, uh, most pieces, you're going to fold them in half and make it in the half and then cut it out. That way you know both ends are symmetrical. The whole thing from center to the right is the same as center to the left. So you always want to do that. You'll see everything now i don't always cut them on the fold there's lots of reasons not to cut some pieces on the fold but definitely make your pattern while it's folded she wants to know if you can leave your collar stand off too you have to put a facing on if you're going to leave the collar stand off so then you would make a facing the same way i showed you how to do the sleeveless facing so you're just going to trace around the neckline the width that you want your facing to be plus the quarter inch turn under. So if you want a two inch facing, you're gonna cut two and a quarter and you're gonna trace it right out of the neckline on the pattern so you know it's gonna fit. Okay? Mary wants to know if she could see the back of the shirt with the sleeve held out, the kimono sleeve held out. Oh, okay. Wish I had it sewn together for you, Mary, but I will next week. And then we'll show you again next week so you can see how it And I'm going to put goes. a cuff on here, too, just for a little pizzazz. And then remind them what that fabric is, Jean. I believe it was Jean who was asking. It's called Bemberg Cupro. And it's relatively new. And sometimes it'll be called Cupra. And they're kind of playing with all kinds of ways to name it. Because it's so new just look for it in a lot of different ways but what it basically is it's not all natural fabric it is recycled fabric so it could be some recycled polyester with some recycled cotton with some recycled rayon and all blended together it but it ha and then it's chemically treated and you get this wonderful suede fluid look and it's also called a crosshatch so you can see the weave in it too, which also adds a little lux to the and look. And it's on the website in three colors. Three colors. Mm -hmm. Yes, we bought it in a sky blue, white, and black. Okay. All right, so then let's talk about the collar. I felt like the collar was a little bit bigger than I wanted it to. And a lot of collars are smaller now in their depth from here to here. And they also don't point down as much. So I use this uh, same pattern, but you see how I changed. Well, let me get it here. Let's lay it down lay here, down. Jess. You can see I, I narrowed it a little bit, but you can see how different the shape of the tip is. And you know how I did that? I laid it on top. I laid my pattern piece on top of a collar that I like the shape of and I just drew the line so I knew what angle. So that's all you have to do. If you've got something in your closet or something you somebody else's closet, whatever, you can take some basics, make the muslin. You might be off a degree or two or you might be right spot on. Just always remember to add the seam allowance. And I say that a hundred times because that's, the, the most common mistake. All right. She wants to know if this can be washed, the Cupro. I wash, it does shrink a little bit. Uh, it's been washed uh, completely. Mm -hmm. Yep, it washes up really nice. It's uh, a really durable fabric as far as I can tell. 
But uh, again, it's a relatively new concept. And it's just a new concept in the fact that it's a recycling blending concept as opposed to being a straight one fiber. Okay. So I think I told you that I had some in two inexpensive shirts I had bought. And this is basically the concept that I was going for. So those shirts had a pocket on them. So, and it was just a plain rectangle pocket, but I wanted to emulate the same size. So I measured on the shirt, the depth and the width. Actually, I did it right here for you. Well, I did it for me, but I know that I want it five and a quarter finished and four and five eighths inch wide. And so then I have to add a hem and I have to add a quarter inch on these three sides. So once I've done my math, I double check my math and then I draw out my pattern piece and I've actually drawn out where it goes on the shirt as well. How did I decide where it was gonna go on the shirt? I measured the distance over on the ready to wear and the distance down on the ready to wear. Then I knew where this first corner should be. And it was just that simple. So simple pocket, just a rectangle. Sorry. All right, and then this piece is the piece I showed you last week. And you can see this is a working piece because I've split it and I opened it up. Remember how we raised up the shoulder seam a half an inch by going to the arm side edge, coming up a half inch, and then drawing over as long as we want it. And let me see how long. I think mine somewhere is around 12 inches. And that doesn't mean yours will be. Mine's a, um, 12 and an eighth or something. So I'm five foot one. I'm not a tall person. If you're five foot nine, you may want to start out maybe go 14. It doesn't matter because you can always take it off. But for your muslin, for your first pattern, give yourself room. We can always take off from the outside. We want the neckline and the shoulder slopes to be correct. Um, and they should be because we've made this pattern from a pattern we knew would fit. So there's my back, my front. Here's my back the lower half of the back. And remember, I have a rounded back, so mine has this little funny uh, curve in it, but it works really well. So the original yoke in all the other shirts looks like this. But this one has to be longer, so I added to it. And, of course, this does fit once this curve is handled. So I lengthened it. Then I double checked to make sure it would fit here. And then I double checked here. This is what you call truing the pattern and making sure that this seam was the same angle and the same length. That's what you have to do before you put them all together. Because sometimes we make changes and we might be off a quarter of an inch. Or we may have messed up on our math. This is the time to fix it before you do it in fabric. So there's my yoke, and of course I showed you my collar and my collar stand, which I cut down, and you'll see that uh, completed next week. So I think that's it. And you can see we started, remember last week I showed you when we went to do this curve on the side seam. Oh, I do have one more thing. But anyway, when you go to do this curve on the side seam, start about two inches above the waist. And that's an arbitrary place, again. And that comes out of the drafting book. And, of course, the drafting books are all based, unless they say otherwise, on an approximate 5 foot 6 figure. So if you're not 5 foot 6, always keep that in mind that you may, or if you're short-waisted or you're long-waisted, that could change. So this is arbitrary just to get yourself started. Now, one more thing you need to do to true the pattern, and I had to do this too, if somehow I was off a little bit, because this whole side seam changed, right? So I had to come over and make sure, and I had to make some changes to get this to match here. And very, very important that it stays on grain. 
Do you see? This is the straight of grain, the fold line here. This is the straight of grain. So you can see they line up, they're equal distance. So I know I stayed on straight of grain. The most important thing to remember when you're making pattern changes is don't mess with the grain line. So always go back to the original. Here's what happened to mine. When I did this, it was slightly off. And when I laid it on there, it fit. But then I looked and I said, no, the straight of grain is off. So I had to move it back and make my changes here in order to make sure I stayed on track here. So any place you're making a change, that's the place you want to double check uh, in paper before you cut it in cloth. And so you had an issue there with the side seam. Ruth wants to know if you had any issues with the extended yoke. No. no. The only issue I had is I had to come in here and make a change. And that was to change this slope and make it longer. Obviously, I had to make this longer. But then I had to confirm that it had the same length and shape here. And again, making sure that everything's going to stay, see again, straight of grain, straight of grain. Everything you can see is equal distance here, equal distance down here. We know we've got it, and it's going to hang right. If this grain's off and this one's off, the whole thing's going to hang so goofy that it, it's just going to look weird on your body even. So straight of grain, straight of grain, very important. And for those who want have the book and want to do the kimono sleeve uh, draft or alteration, it's on page 260, I think, if I remember right. Yes. So you're going to find that on page 260. It's going to show you how to open up your darts. It shows you how to lift that seam uh, here that I showed you how to do. But this you can go into more in-depth details when uh, you're working with drafting. Are we done? <laughs> Are you? Well, I am done with this. Uh, if anyone has any other questions about any of the Camp shirt conversion, sleeveless, collar, no collar, collar stand, whatever. I'm happy to answer your questions. Boy, it's getting really warm here in Michigan. I think we're going to have to open the windows in a few minutes. Don't forget about the sale. Right. And so if you spend between $50 and $99, you're going to get 10% off. No. Yep. Oh, you yeah. spend 100 to 199 you're going to get 15% off and you spend anything over 200 you'll get 20% off and again that includes kits and we all know the kits have already been marked down 20%. So it's a real bargain on those but all all the new products everything is included. So go shopping and have fun. I am Ready to come back over there if you have uh, any, or do you want to close here? I can close. I don't have any more questions. But no more questions. just tell them how to ask you if you need. Okay, yeah. And if you have any questions along the way, just email me at islandersewing at comcast.net. That's islandersewing at comcast.net. And that email goes to both Brenda and I, so if it's about your order, uh, Brenda may answer you if it's about uh, the process or um, pattern making or whatever, then you're likely to get an answer from me. But um, we're happy to help you any way we can. All right. And thanks so much. I don't know. Are we going short today or does it just seem little, short? Just a little. Just a little? Okay. It makes up for all the times we went long. Yeah. And Cassie can get back to work earlier. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we appreciate you. We're so glad you're here every Tuesday with us. And um, we're here at Islander Sewing Systems. That's islandersewing.com for anything that we can do to help you with your sewing uh, enjoyment. 
I'm Janet Prey, and I'm here with Jessica Johnson, and we'll be back next Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Happy sewing!